Hello, I'm Mark, and this is In the Round on Amateur Bus Tutorial Series, Part 4, The Blank Head. If you've watched Parts 1 through 3 of this tutorial series, you should now have your clay, your tools, and your armature, which means it's time to start the actual sculpt. At this point, I want to emphasize something I mentioned in the introduction, that the steps I'm going to lay out here are systematic by design. They're intended to familiarize you with the basics of sculpting a bust as efficiently and with as little room for error as possible. This is not, however, to say that they're the only way to make a bust. As you gain familiarity with the process through practice, you'll want to seek out additional instruction from classes, books, or other videos in order to expand and deepen your understanding of the figure and to bolster your repertoire of sculptural techniques. In this way, you'll begin to develop your own personal methods and style. For now, however, it will be best to keep each of the following steps discreet and to strive for a high degree of symmetry and surface refinement at each stage. This will prevent you from having to correct past mistakes while trying to move forward. And now, at long last, to begin. The first step is to get some clay loaded onto the armature. If we just slap it on as is, however, it will sag as we work, slowly, almost imperceptibly falling off the armature until the wires are sticking out of the top of the head. We need to get the clay to adhere, but in a way that allows us to easily remove it for hollowing and firing. To do so, we'll be using a plastic grocery bag. This kind of bag, though very thin, is made from high-density polyethylene, a hard plastic that will resist stretching under the weight of the clay. Make sure the bag doesn't have any holes in it. Put it over the armature, tucking the egg beater into one corner. Make sure no loose ends of binding wire have perforated the bag. Twist the bag around the armature in one direction. Tie it off at the handles. Tape it down with a thin strip of tape. Use as little tape as possible, as the clay won't stick as well to it as to the bag. Next, spread a layer of slip over the bag. Apply it thoroughly, but not too thickly. If you don't have any slip, see my video, The Remains of the Clay, on reconstituting dry clay. Now we're ready to load on the initial clay. Use large, fat logs. You can cut these from a block, or shape them by hand, or some combination of the two. Make sure they're relatively uniform. A few air pockets won't matter, as all this clay will be hollowed out of the bust before it's fired, but if it's too loose, it will be hard to shape subsequent layers. Work your way up from the base, pushing the slip ahead of the clay as you compress it firmly onto the armature. Once you've worked your way up to the neck, Insert four oblong lugs of clay between the loops of the egg beater. Build up around the head. Shape and compress the clay, first with your hands, then with a serrated metal rib, then a smooth metal or plastic rib. Use firmly curved, raking fingers to move the clay efficiently. If handled correctly, ribs are very effective tools because they can be used for compression, removal, and addition. For instance, you can scrape away clay by holding the rib at a high angle, then spread that removal back on by holding it at a low angle. This is a great way to quickly remove high spots and fill in low spots in order to even out surfaces. When using flexible ribs, make sure to always bend them to conform to the curves you're describing. This will not only allow you to shape the clay more effectively, but the curve will make the rib far stronger than it would be if held flat. It's also important when shaping clay to crosshatch over the surface. If you work in one direction only, the tools will simply follow the contour of the surface, reinforcing the ridges and depressions that are already there. Refine with a little bit of water and a scouring pad or piece of reticulated foam. Before moving on to building the blank head, this clay needs to stiffen up to about soft leather hard, which will help to support the weight of subsequent additions. You can do this either by waiting for a couple of hours, 
or longer, depending on how humid your environment is, or by force drying it with a heat gun or hair dryer. Note that if you use a heat gun, the exterior will dry very quickly, which can give you a false sense of the internal moisture. Be careful you don't just have a thin shell of dry clay over a soft interior, or it might start cracking when you add weight to it. When the initial clay is stiff enough to move on, you'll need to gather your primary measurements. We'll be using four, three to approximate the dimensions of the head, and one to position it. Use calipers to measure the height of the head from chin to crown, the depth of the head from glabella to external occipital protuberance, that little bump at the base of your skull, the width of the head between the notches of the ears, and the distance between the suprasternal notch, or pit of the neck, to the crown. If you aren't attempting a likeness, take these measurements from yourself or from a friend, or you can use mine, which I've provided below. Don't forget to scale up your measurements to account for clay shrinkage if you intend to do so. Decide how much base you want for your bust. For a finished, fully realized sculpture, how much and what kind of base you make is very important. If you're just practicing, it matters much less. Still, it's better to have more than you need, so make a guess, then add an inch or two. Mark the suprasternal notch at that height. Measure from the suprasternal notch up to the crown and add a lug of clay to mark the total height. Measure down from the crown and mark the chin height. Roll a fat coil of clay. If you don't know how to roll a coil, see my video, Double Double Coiling Trouble. Following the midline, lay the coil up and over the crown, from the chin to the base of the occipital. This may take more than one coil. Using raking fingers, thoroughly attach the coil. Working in profile only, begin shaping the front plane of the face, from the chin to the turn of the frontal bone, about at the hairline. Work your way around to the external occipital protuberance. Note that the base of the occipital is about level with the base of the nose. Don't make a lollipop head. See my video, The Bad Bust, on common bust errors. Check the protraction or retraction of the face over the neck. That is, how the head is centered in profile on the neck. Is it too far forward? Too far back? Adjust accordingly. Check the height and depth of the head. As you'll be building up to your finished form, you want to be about half an inch under your measured dimensions at this point. Having established the correct dimensions along the midline, you will now have to build up to the appropriate width. Do so by adding equal balls of clay symmetrically on either side. Note the fullness of the back of the head and how it tapers forward into the face. The widest point of the head is typically just above the ears. You may find that the head looks quite thin at this point, but trust your measurements. It looks wrong because it doesn't have ears yet. Double check your symmetry. Don't neglect the top down and bottom up angles. Approximate the location of the notches of the ears. These will be at just about the center point of the head in profile. From these points, approximate the jawline. Double check your measurements, remembering that at this point they are approximate and should be slightly under the total dimensions. As you build up your forms, they will come more clearly into focus. Having established the blank head, we are now going to begin building up what will ultimately become the shoulders. Take two even balls of clay and place them on either side of the neck. Starting at the suprasternal notch, work the clay back and up around the neck toward the base of the occipital at an angle of about 35 degrees. This will start to define the slope of the shoulders from the trapezius muscles in the back down to the clavicle in front. Refine to your satisfaction and check your measurements and symmetry one last time. The blank head is now complete, but it will need to stiffen up a little before moving on to part 5 of this series, in which we'll be blocking in the features with secondary measurements. Then, in part 6, having established our proportions, we'll further develop the neck, shoulders, chest, and back.